welcome to the morning prayers this particular uh, particular morning. We are grateful and thankful to God who has given us yet another day where we can come and worship and magnify the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Last week, just to give us a summary, we were talking about kingdom giving and we said that kingdom giving is a deliberate choice of giving back to God what is rightfully is and that which we have uh, purposed in our hearts. We say that every man, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7, every man, according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. So we spoke about different kinds of kingdom giving. We spoke about uh, four types of kingdom givings. Number one, we spoke about tithes. Number two, we spoke about um about kingdom giving in terms of offerings we spoke about face fruit we spoke about alms giving that's those are some of them that we spoke about last week we also spoke about the purposes of kingdom giving when we said king, kingdom giving we give because we are commanded um we also said we give uh because we are mature in christ and in god and in the church and we understand church administration how the, the kingdom of god works maturity uh places us in a place where we give to God. Then we also spoke about uh, giving that we give to honor God. It's a sign of honoring God. We also spoke about giving because we love and we fear God. And also that because God is our all sufficient, sufficient, sufficient God. So when we're giving, then we're proving to God that he's our, he's our giver and that that is the one that takes care of all our needs. Uh, we said that also giving stores up treasures in heaven, Matthew 6, 19 to 21. To say, do not store wealth on earth where there are moths that are going to eat your wealth. Rather, store it in heaven where there are no moths. Hallelujah. Amen. That was uh, that was last week what we spoke about last week when we were learning about giving. Today we are taking it a little further and we are going to talk about uh, kingdom giving part two. Today we are talking about tithes, tithe, giving, giving of tithes. Amen. And I want you to learn this if you open your heart to hear this because most of the people they resent these teachings. If you open your heart this morning, you are going to learn things that you've never learned before about the tithing, and it's going to help you in your life, not only in your life, but in the lives of your children and that of your children's children. Hallelujah. So according to the Bible, tithing, as we all know, it is 10% of one's income. So we read from the book of Genesis chapter 14, verse 17. That is where we're going to take uh, a case study today on tithing. Because giving tithe is not, uh, you know, because most of the people now, they say, wow, it is in the Old Testament, it's a mosaic law. So we have to deal with it. Um, rather, tithing started, it did not start as a mosaic law. It started as a principle, as a principle uh, of faith as a principle of, of faith in God and and the one who started the principle of, of tithing was Abraham who is called to be the father of faith he's not is not the father of the law the father of the law is Moses the father of faith is Abraham and so uh, it is a principle rather than a law and I'll explain what I mean by this uh, of acknowledging God's sovereignty so uh, tithe is a principle of acknowledging God's sovereignty of our lives. Hallelujah. It is a principle of acknowledging God's sovereignty of our lives. Let's go to the book of Genesis chapter 14, verse 17. Genesis chapter 14, verse 17. The Bible says, A man who had escaped uh, came and reported this to Abraham. Now Abraham was living near the great tree of memory, the Amorite, a brother of Isco and Erna, all of whom were aliens with Abraham. When Abraham heard that his relative had been captured, he called out the 318 trained men born in his household and went in pursuit as far as Dan. During the night, Abraham divided his men to attack them and he routed them, pursuing them as far as Eb Eber, north of Damascus. He discovered all the goods and brought back his relative lot and his possessions together with the women and the other people. After Abraham returned from defeating Kedel Homer and the kings allied with him, the king of Sodom came out to meet him in the valley of Shaveh, that is the king's valley. Then Melchizedek, 
king of Salem brought out bread and wine. He was a priest of the Most High God, and he blessed Abraham, saying, Blessed be Abraham by the Most High God, creator of the heavens and the earth, and praise be to the Most High God who delivered your enemies in your hand. Then Abraham gave him a tenth of everything. Then the kingdom of God, then the kingdom of, so of Sodom, uh, said, the king of Sodom said to Abraham, Give me the people and keep the goods for yourself. But Abraham said to the king of Sodom, With raised hands, I have sworn an oath to the Lord, God most high, creator of the heaven and the earth, that I will accept nothing belonging to you, not even a thread of a strap of a sandal, so that you will never be able to say, I made Abraham rich. I will accept nothing but why, uh, what my men have eaten and the share that belong to me, uh, men who went with me to uh, to Enna, Esco, and Memer, let them have their share. So this is the old story that we find about Abraham and when it came to him meeting Melchizedek and giving a tithe. This is a very, very important story in our lives and in our context because at this particular moment, there was no law. There was no law which can compel Abraham to give. A law is is something that compels somebody to do something or not to do something. So when they say, you know, you should do this, then that is that is a legal thing. Well, if you don't do it, it comes with consequences. A principle is an attitude that we have developed concerning a particular uh, 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 subject, a, a particular thing, and we are convinced that what we are doing is right based on the information that we have gathered. So principle is not law because law you are afraid of the consequence. Every law comes with a consequence. So, for example, when they say "don't steal," so it means that when you steal, there's a consequence to you, to to there's a consequence to stealing. But a principle is purely based on our understanding of on our understanding of something, and then we do it. I gave an example on Sunday in the church. I said if you come in church. And then they say the women. When I grew up, I used to. I grew up in the Baptist church. So those days in the Baptist church, when I was a boy, the women would sit on the left, the men would sit on the right of the church. They were not allowed to mix, whether you're married or you're not married. So that's how they used to be in the church. That was a law in that particular church when we were growing up. Okay, so you could not sit where the women section was and where the men section. It was legal. And then principle is now there is no such a law. But you go and sit in church and you sit with them. You, you go and sit next to a married man or a married woman. And then the husband come. Or you see the husband or the wife is a bit late, slightly late, and they're coming. Principle is you leaving the seat next to that person and sitting somewhere else, then continuing to sit there. So legally, there's no legal binding. There's no legal uh, 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 binding or there's no, there's no consequence. To you sitting there in in the real sense as it were but the principle tells you that you know you cannot sit here because somebody is with their wife and you know you cannot allow somebody to sit alone and you sit with their wife or their husband either way and vice versa so that's principle amen so we have to understand that god has principles and then the principles that he used to set and to create the heavens and the earth, those are principles. But be without me digressing and going very far from what we're talking about, let me bring it back again to what we're talking about. So we're talking about tithe being a principle. And we see that Abraham, though there was no law to compel him, he still went and gave a tenth of everything. Now the question we need to ask of ourselves is that where did Abraham learn this from? Why did he learn giving a tithe? Because the we don't, we don't have any evidence of anyone else giving tithe apart from Abraham. So now, when it comes to this, to this, we go and search the Bible. And uh, when we search in the Bible now, we, 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 we broaden this, the subject. That's, what, uh, that's how, we, how, we, how we, we study the Bible. We broaden the subject. So when we broaden the subject, what is, what is tithing? Tithing is giving. So then we start looking at, at other, other scriptures that talks about giving before Abraham. And there are about three instances which categorically describe giving in the Bible before Abraham. One is when, um, when, uh, when God himself 
gave. He killed an animal when Abraham and uh, Adam and Eve they had sinned. They covered themselves with leaves because they said we are naked, so they clothed themselves with leaves. God showed sorry for them. He said, these people, they don't even know what they're doing. These things cannot hold for long. So God went and killed an animal. He found a solution for humanity. And, and he gave them, he clothed them with, with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with leather, animal, animal leather. So basically, uh, God was the first one to give humanity. Besides him giving them, giving us life, but it was the one who actually gave in the physical to humanity. So when man was covered from their sins, somewhere, somehow, it dawned on them that giving is a principle that they should learn. So the next time we see people giving is when when uh, um, Cain and Abel, they sacrifice. Uh, this one brings the sacrifice and this one brings the sacrifice. Who taught them sacrifice? Who taught them to give? I believe God taught them the principle. That's why they learned it from their father, Adam and Eve. And that's the taught it to their children. Because everything that we know, we learn it from somewhere. Hallelujah. Everything that we know, everything about our lives, it's, we picked it from somewhere, 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 somehow. You know, sometimes we even forget where we picked it from. But everything that we know, we learn. When a child is born, they're just born empty. And then it's like an empty container to start feeding things in. And those things, they become part of our characters. They become part of our livelihoods. They become part of who we are. Eventually, as time moves, goes by. And so we see that these people, they give uh, 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 Cain and Abel. Of course, you know that story. Let's not dive into it. Then the next time we see somebody giving is when Noah came out of the boat. Noah in Genesis chapter 10. He comes out of the, that boat after, after waiting there for many days. Then he comes out of the boat and he comes and offers. He comes and gives. So that's the second time that we see some third time we see somebody giving. From that moment, the next time that we see somebody giving is when Abraham is given. And when you look at Abraham, his life was shaped by this principle. And so we can learn, we can therefore, from this study, we can deduce. You remember that in the olden times there was no uh, there was no writings. That's how even in Africa, most of the stories in Africa, we got them through what is called oral tradition. We would sit down together with our grandmothers, mostly grandmothers. From Adam to Abraham, there was oral tradition being taught consistently, consistently being taught, consistently being taught, consistently being taught. So we now therefore understand that even the principle of giving a tenth it was a principle that was given way back and kept on moving in the traditions, the old traditions. Hallelujah. So it became now a principle. And that's why Abraham instinctively was able to give a tenth to God. Now we see that in Genesis chapter 15, God says something very important and powerful about Abraham. The reason why he chose Abraham, the reason why he, he, he blessed Abraham and, and set, set him apart, he said, I know Abraham, and I know that he's going to teach his children. I know that he will be able to teach his children the things that I teach him now. And that's why I've selected him. That's why I have appointed him, because he's going to teach his children these principles. And so Abraham goes and teaches Jacob. When Jacob was in trouble, we read in Genesis chapter 28, uh, Jacob was going, he was running away from his brother Esau, uh, and was going to a place where he did not want to labor his uncle. One time he, may, he was at the mountain, and there he, he struggled. He struggled so much with, with pressure, and so much pressure in his heart, and he was thinking about so many things. So Abraham, so Jacob said, he started praying to God, and he said, Lord, if you bless me and you go before me where I'm going, I'm going to give you a tenth of everything. I'm going to, I'm going to be given a tenth of everything that you're going to be giving me. Amen. Mm -hmm. So, how did does he learn about the tenth? And how is it important? Why should he bring it up? Why did he say, I'll give you 5%? Why did he say, I'll give you 1%? Why did he say, I'll just give you something? Why did he ask to emphasize on the tenth of everything that God gave him? Because it is a principle. Hallelujah. It is a principle that is able to work in our lives. And as we are going to learn tomorrow and on on wednesday on thursday we're going to learn now 
exactly how this principle works, what it does in your life, in your children's children, how it breaks certain, certain curses from generation to generation. Hallelujah. So, so Abraham, so Jacob uh, says that and he, has a, he sleeps and when he sleeps, he has a dream on that particular mountain. And the dream he had, he dreams a ladder. That is a long ladder coming from earth, going into heaven. And on that ladder, angels are ascending and descending on that particular place. Ascending and descending on that particular place. He had a dream, vivid dream. And so he woke up and he said, he took some oil, he poured on some stones there, he built an altar, and he said, this is the house of God. It was called Luz, he named it Bethel. Bethel means what? The house of God. So he says, this is the house of God. Hallelujah, because he had an encounter with God. He met God at that particular particular moment because of his communication and vows and communication with, with God. So the lesson for today is that tithe is not a law, rather it is a principle. And what I've been doing is that I've been doing a case study to give us a study of how it began so that we can understand we, we all have to know how something starts so that we understand what it is so from the study we have we have gathered this morning we have learned that um, the principle of tithing came before the law the law emphasized it but before the law it was already a matter of principle that god had established on the earth and we see that people of faith like abraham they were able to practice it Isaac, they were able to practice it. Jacob, the three patriarchs, they were all able to practice it. Hallelujah. That's why even Jesus in the New Testament, he mentions about it. He talks about it. Why? Because it was a principle. Glory to God. It was a principle that has been there consistently in the kingdom.